or managers who haven't won in All Ireland? Who comes to mind to you straight away? Uh, just three that come to mind, and again, this is probably recency bias, but they'd be Derek McGrath, Anthony Daly, and Anthony Cunningham. Um, you'd be thinking, like, you'd be thinking when you look at McGrath, when well, he's gone from Waterford, he seems the type of guy you'd be thinking he's going to get another goal, wouldn't you? Kind of senior at the county management, whether that be Waterford or somewhere else. But uh, I suppose I'm kind of waiting this out to look at their general managerial impact. I mean, he won all Ireland medals at schools level with the De La Salle teams. He had some success at club level with De La Salle. And you think of where Waterford were when he took over and how badly his first year went and the kind of transformative impact he had on them and getting them so close. It was kind of, it seemed like the natural kind of cycle. You know, they lost a semi final in 15, semi final replay in 16. They get to the final in 17 and then lose narrowly uh, to Galway. Um, so he'd be one for me. And then Anthony Daly, obviously, you've, we've talked to, you've touched on the sliding doors a moment later, but Dublin's progress and success that he had, you know, winning the league in 2011, winning Leinster in 13, obviously didn't end well in 14. And then I think as well, it's probably overlooked the job he did with Clare earlier on at a time when it really wasn't easy coming in in the post Lockman era. But, you know, had a couple of bad days. When was the day that they lost very heavily to Watford first day out? Was that a four maybe? Um, but it's kept them competitive. A couple of other semi final appearances. 05 being obviously the big one where it's probably looked were well in the driving seat that day against Corpo and tied back in the last quarter. Um, so kind of the cumulative work that he would have done as a manager. And then Anthony Cunningham for, you know, it takes a lot of boxes with the, say, the football side, first of all, success with Gary Castle, more recently then with Ross Common. Uh, so he previously with St. Bridges as well. Wins at 21 All Ireland with Galway in 2011. It's the Galway senior thing then, it obviously didn't end well for him, the kind of stuff off the pitch. And the way that they lost that 2015 final, um, in kind of the manner of the second half performance, given how impressive they looked at half time in that game. But to kind of get them to two finals, and kind of again, they were coming from a base where they didn't get over the line under him, but they weren't really in a position to even get to that stage. I mean, it was a couple of seasons before they, remember they kept them kind of crumbling against Watford teams, I kind of remember if, in, uh, in Curtis and qualifiers. So I think he's a good, good case, a good strong shout there. Um, who's coming to mind for you, Mike? Yeah, Derek McGrath would definitely be one that springs to mind because, like, if we're talking to Watford players from this current generation in 30 years' time, they'll still be talking about Derek McGrath. They'll still be talking about the impact that he had. Similarly, if we're talking to Dublin hurlers in 20 years' time, they will talk about the impact that Dalo had. Um, I don't think I don't think the way it worked out that like Galway players will be talking about Anthony Cunningham, but that's that, that's not to say that he didn't do an unbelievable job. And obviously that Leinster final in 2012, and he came in. Do you know, he came in and just kind of changed the mentality a lot, I think. Like, like he turned around the physical condition of a lot of, of, a lot of their players. Like, Joe Canning was in different physical shape once Cunningham came in. He think he changed... Like, he's not going to get the credit. He didn't get the credit maybe after Michal Dunahoo because Michal Dunahoo got them over the line. But he, it's one of these things, it's kind of a selfless thing where he, he won't get the credit, but he did play a massive part and did leave them in a better position than they were when he picked them up. They'd probably three that would spring to mind. Um, looking back into the past, Len Gaynor would be one that would spring to mind too. It was kind of going back through the list of um, of managers that, you know, losing maybe all Ireland final managers or losing semi-finalists. He would definitely be one. Like I remember the, the whole crack around uh, around him and Nan coming up to the 97 final. And I remember that there was a, a kind of an edict down from Crow Park that both of them had to sit on a bench for the duration of the 1997 All-Ireland final. And then there was the excuse after. They were both, both up over the bench after, off the bench after about five minutes. But this both said that the, the benches were freshly painted and that their tracks and bottoms or trousers were being destroyed. But he would have had, obviously, it's funny that, that he ended up coming up against Clare in 97 because... Again, much like Cunningham in Galway, he was the one that set the platform for Lucknan to come in. Like he did really, really well with Clare. Well, here, here's the question: like, there's there's a few of these managers who we're going to talk about now that obviously played a big part. And I mean, Eamon O'Shea is someone who did some. Like, he took over a Tipperary team in 2013 that was kind of on the floor. Didn't happen for him in 2013, losing to Limerick and losing to Kilkenny. 2014 got really, really close, taking Kilkenny to a replay. 2015 lose a cracker of a semi-final to to Galway, and you know those fine margins. But then the following year, the team goes on and wins. And Michael Ryan has credited Eamon O'Shea for a lot of the work he did. Then Lane Gaynor, he did a lot of the groundwork uh, for four years with Clare. 
they go and win the All Ireland next year under the selector Gerald McMahon, and then like you've mentioned, Anthony Cunningham as well. He does a lot of the groundwork. Michal Donahue comes in, and he adds that extra ingredient to get him over the line. So even even just out of those three, if we just pick those three, Finton, I'll start with you. Is there any of them that you'd give as the front runner here? Because we're all going to pick our number one. Shane, one second here now. Sorry now, one second. I cannot have Eamon O'Shea in this conversation. I really, I really can't because, like, I know it's the the manager. The manager is what you're looking at, right? He was a, like a pivotal, pivotal cog in 2010. Like, it's, it's, it's not. It's. I don't even think it's overplayed how much of a cog he was in 2010. And then he wins in All Ireland as a coach in 2019 as well. Fair enough. I understand what you're what you're saying. He was manager for three years and they didn't win in All Ireland. But like. To say, if we were to vote that Eamon O'Shea was the most influent or was the, the the best manager to have never won an All Ireland, I think that's a bit of a joke because he has won he has won All Irelands, and fair enough, he wasn't. I know you're going to say, oh, it's the manager and the manager and the coach are a different thing, but come on, like I, I think it would be like the same as saying that Rory Gallagher is the best football manager to have never won. Fair enough, he didn't manage, but he did coach in a non-traditional county, so I I can't have him I can't have him to the forefront of this conversation. Vincent, do you want yeah, to dance I, in my head as well? No, I, I completely agree with that. Because, you see, it's not even that... If you think about when he took over as manager, in many ways it felt like it was a continuation of his role in the way he was viewed in the squad. And, I mean, we're talking about how... Well, no, he took over played. after Declan Ryan. Like, I mean, Tip had just lost by 18 points to Kilkenny and he had to pick yeah, the team but, up off the floor. But it, was, it, was, it wasn't like he was picking up a different new squad that he hadn't worked with in 2010. It wasn't like these players were in into him, you know. They were all very comfortable with his style of play and all that sort of stuff. And I mean, I remember someone describing last year, he was the most overqualified Mayor Ishka to ever be on all our <laughs> final day in Crow Park last year. But the way that CD was sending him in for instructions, and I know they've all completely downplayed his role last year, but I mean, you know, you look at the way he was in the sideline of the Wexford game, I mean, he was definitely uh, the most consulted Mayor Ishka I've seen anyway <laughs> towards the end of a championship in Crow Park. Um, I mean, like, if you're going to go down that road of criteria, then technically you're going to bring Justin McCarthy into this because I think he was a coach at Cork in the 80s, but then technically didn't win it as manager with Waterford. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I think in the establishment of the criteria, I'm with Michael here as a guy's really name and O'Shea. But, but you're, you're happy enough to start talking about Anthony Cunningham's football achievement when a lot of good hurling men would discount him altogether just by virtue of ever picking up a football. Well, we can we can discount the football achievements if you want. They're just merely uh, background information to uh, you know, portray the rounded character and the uh, the managerial press. Yeah, um, do you see, this is the beauty but, of criteria around here. We'll pick and choose as it suits us, and there's no bigger culprit than myself. Well, yeah, but I just, I just don't think O'Shea can come into this equation yeah. because of the fact that he was just so central as a coach, and like it's it's within the same decade. I mean, he's had three different roles in decade. And was heavily involved in in two different sets of all Ireland wins. Yeah, I find that very impressive. I have to, I agree with you there. <laughs> Can I just jump on to a little bit more about Len Gaynor because we're trying to to compare these managers who set up an awful lot of the work for a team to ultimately go on and win all Ireland. But Len Gaynor did an interview with uh, Keen O'Connell there a while back, and he goes, "I was finishing up my career, but in 1977, 78, 79, we won three county finals in a row. That's with Killer on McDonough. I was managing the team and playing well, playing as well." Then I retired after that and we went on and won another county final in 85 and won the All-Ireland Club final then in 86. So so beaten in two monster finals gets tipped to, to be honest, in Tipperary that would be seen as a failure to lose um, Munster and All-Ireland finals in 1997. And then compare and contrast him with Anthony Cunningham, won a first ever Connacht, or sorry, Leinster title in 2012. That was a big deal and people didn't see it coming. Got to a couple of All-Ireland finals, a replay in 2012 maybe should have won one. So even just between those two, before we move on to any more, who would you pick, Fintan? I'd probably pick Cunningham. Um, on the basis of, like, I would give a lot of, I suppose it's different eras and all that, um, but say, like, say that all earned semi-final win over uh, Tip in 15, you know, that was a team that had kind of flatlined a bit. Like, the team had kind of changed a bit from, the team of 15 was different from the team of 12. You almost had to kind of reinvent it a bit again because, I mean, the way they lost the tip in 14 was a really bad blow. I mean, they had that game completely won. And then, was yeah, James Barry kind of went in full back, Buddy Mark came out and tip kind of turned it around, Callan caught fire. Um, so I think kind of the work that he did there. And, you know, like they, they, the, I suppose the job he did in 2012 against Lens in uh, Kilkenny in the Leinster final. Um, 
and, you know, at halftime in 2015, I did think the way they performed that first half, was it, was it were they up by three? Was it like 14 points or something they had hit, maybe 15? Mm. Uh, completely battling in the second half, and then what followed in that winter is what the era will be kind of remembered for. But I think as well, like going back to what Michael was saying earlier, that he maybe, like, it isn't the kind of fondness with which, you know, the Dublin Walker players remember Daly and McGrath, but I do think it's privately acknowledged that say he wasn't there some of the longer serving players weren't there when they finally got over the line in 17 but i think there was without kind of explicitly saying it various people did touch on it that there was a lot of people had done a lot of work and in particular i think it was his kind of management era that kind of was the launch pad for when dunn who then obviously came in and, and and took it on and maybe connor whelan is probably one of the guys that springs to mind was kind of one of the new players then but largely by and by with the players it was kind of the same one Okay, Michael, I'll throw it to you in a second, but just to, to mention a couple of other guys in case we forget. John Myler had a couple of spells with Kerry and, of course, beat Waterford famously in 1993 with them. Also with Wexford, Carlo took Cork to an All-Ireland semi-final and close to the final, of course. I'm sure he still agonises over that. Tom Ryan could have won a couple of All-Irelands with Limerick in the 90s. Colin Bonner, uh, some might say Kieran Kingston. I think Michael Ryan with Watford did some good work with Westmead. Uh, Watford obviously had a huge amount of, of titles in, in ladies football as well, which of course doesn't come into the conversation. Uh, the late Jim Nelson was um, suggested by Shane Brophy. He goes and was quotes on the 42 actually from Sambo about him saying his greatest achievement was that Antrim played eight years in Division One. Now this is the manager who got them to the All Ireland final in '89. It proved that a so-called weaker team could compete at the highest level. He was into healthy living, a concept that was ahead of his time, and he introduced two balls into a hurling drill to keep the intensity going. Uh, long before that idea became commonplace, we hadn't seen it before. We were given free boots and tracksuits, and players' partners were also well looked after. He actually did talk in that interview. I think Jackie Cahill did it whereby um, players would go along to the match and their wives would have to pay in. But he sort of changed it and made sure that they got on free and, and got in free and got a cup of tea and, and so on. Michael? Anybody, like, who else do I think comes into that? Like, uh, suppose like, the main ones you mentioned there, like, I, I don't think, I don't think Kieran Kingston will come into that conversation, in my, in my opinion. Um, like, his, his first spell as Cork manager was a bit of a disaster at times even been beaten by we by Wexford in that game um, if they do something over the next couple of years um, he'll come into it he did obviously win a Munster title with them um, and they were they were beaten uh, in a an All-Ireland semi-final and beaten quite resoundingly so I, I don't really think he comes into it Tom Ryan is definitely one that stands out like Limerick were in like Limerick played nearly the guts of more than a half of an All-Ireland final in 96 with 15 against 14 they should have been winning that game and in 1994, obviously, you have the five minute final against Offaly, so he'd be definitely he'd be definitely one that would be high up in the conversation as well. Um, of other ones, yeah, like kind of got thinking about it when you think about like who's around now and some of the club managers that are around now and some of the managers that have had kind of club success and like the last like three or four All Ireland club hurling winners really stand out because they're all of a of a kind of a certain age, uh, like modern. And like Henry Sheffin, obviously, with Ballyhale the last two years, Matty Kenny with, with your own Kula, and then Shane O'Neill from the Piercing. So Shane O'Neill is obviously in intercounty management now with Galway, and Matty's in with Dublin. So I'd be interested to get your thoughts. I'd have an idea in my head who I think will be the first to win a senior All Ireland, and I'd like to get yours. Wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. I think Dublin are a little bit away from it at the moment, but. And you wonder what Kilkenny, right? So. Brian Cody's probably going to be there for another couple of years anyway, whether he steps away himself or whether, I don't know, pressure comes uh, from the public, because obviously this year is the drive for five, five years without an All-Ireland. But if Henry Shefflin comes in, he's probably going to be at a stage that TJ Reid is 35, we'll say, so maybe he will be still a brilliant hurler, I'm not sure. Richie Hogan is going to be a similar age and the injury toll at that stage. Will they have as many star men to win an All-Ireland? Not 100% sure if Dublin will either at that stage. So I think Shane O'Neill might actually be the most likely of those three. Fintan? The thing is, all about Shefflin, just when you touch him, he did a very good interview a couple of weeks ago with uh, Michael Scotty, Vincent Hogan, in the Independent. And kind of read between the lines, like, like it was kind of everything that's going on at the moment in sport, but also his decision to step down with Bally Hale. And he kind of struck me like a man that needed a break from hurling, that it was just been so intense the last couple of years. And I mean, look, he, he know better. Uh, than I would as regards to kind of club commitments but how the, those, those kind of marathon campaigns okay it ended in January this year but the previous one had gone on, on St. Patrick's Day and it kind of been non-stop for him and I also got the impression don't know is he kind of too keen being the man to take over from 
Cody. Um, look, if the opportunity arose, maybe he might feel differently, but he didn't seem to be kind of entertaining the thought of it uh, too much. And I just wonder, would it be something, you know, he's still kind of young enough in his managerial career that he'd prefer to let kind of slide, um, let slide for a while. Um, I suppose, yeah, you're, you're kind of saying about Shane O'Neill, because he was an interesting choice. He was kind of a bit left field in terms of kind of going to Galway, but, you know, the work he did with the Pearshig, uh, like the players obviously would speak very highly of kind of the role that Alan Cunningham would have played there in kind of getting them over the line. I mean, they had a brilliant Munster record. Maybe the fact that one all Ireland from four, I'd say probably maybe it irks them a little bit um, and not managing to, to get another one out of that. Uh, just one other that I'll throw in from the kind of 90s era, don't necessarily think he'd be number one here, would be Manny Murphy for a time when the National League, I think, meant a good bit more and was probably a more prestigious competition. He did win a couple of them. Okay, didn't get the All-Ireland senior. Uh, probably the most successful All-Ireland minor manager there ever will be. Well, you know, I think he won five or six um, in the end. I, I agree with Michael, I probably have someone like Tom Ryan ahead of him, uh, but he'd probably be in the conversation anyway for kind of the, the only impact he had. And like, he kind of did a lot of stuff at other levels uh, as well. But yeah, definitely there is a good few current contenders and it's probably a sign as well that the standard of the club game has risen in both football and hurling in terms of what the players are producing and then the kind of calibre of manager that's been attracted um, like you think Michael Ryan goes into very senior hurling manager and then takes over a club in Limerick and you know it's, it just seems like kind of more national move than ever now doesn't it at the very kind of top of the club game kind of moving between that and county mm. I think it's worth giving Sambo McNaughton uh, a mention as well he's had three spells in charge of Antrim uh, Michael Vernon you mentioned Tom Ryan first off before Finton did and the the circumstances in which they lost those All-Irelands so being well ahead against Offaly being against 14 men possibly a little knock on him now for not managing the situations mid-game very difficult to do in a game of hurling at that intensity but I'd probably just about kind of knock him out of the contention for that and I probably jeez I'm struggling to I'm struggling to actually pick one here I'd say it's, it's possibly looking like is it looking about like Anthony Cunningham Derek McGrath are we kind of narrowing it down that way I mean we're all going to pick our own one but uh, Michael I'll give it to you yeah, I, I, I'd be picking Anthony Daly myself um, just because of his achievements with two non-traditional counties. Uh, obviously, took Clare very, very close, having just finished up his own county career. Uh, they should they should have beaten Cork in, in that 05 semi-final, an absolute belter of a game. Like, I remember those 05 semi-finals. They were poles apart. That was 16-15. And the car came with a, with a kind of flourish at the end. But that was real kind of tight stuff. And then the other semi-final, they had Galway 5-18, uh, Kilkenny uh, 4-18, poles apart. He obviously went on. He was he was over Clare for three years, I think. Then he went on and brought Dublin closer than anybody has brought them in the last God knows how long. And we're going to talk about it later, a sliding doors moment that could have you know, could have kind of, I suppose, unearthed. God only knows how Dublin Hurling would have exploded if they had eventually won the All Ireland in 2013. I probably have Dalo uh, top of the tree for me, um, just because he's done it with two different counties. Anthony Cunningham will be a close second, and just on the the Shane O'Neill, Henry Shefflin, Matty Kenny thing, I think it could be really interesting, particularly in three or four years. I'll make a couple of bold predictions. I think Matty Kenny will be over Galway. I think Shane O'Neill will be over Limerick. And I think Henry will be over Kilkenny. And then I think it's going to be really, really interesting. I think Shane O'Neill could be the man to take over from John Kiley in Limerick. And I think if I'm looking at it, I think he's the most likely to win an All-Ireland first of those three. But I think those three could be over three really high-profile counties, their, their native counties, in the next four or five years. And I think, uh, yeah, it could be very interesting times. That's some hot takes right there. Uh, one of the things that was said about Daly when he was with Dublin was that there were an awful lot of yo-yo seasons, a good one followed by a bad one. Derek McGrath, you could say his first season and his last season both didn't go certainly the way they planned in terms of results anyway. But I'd probably just about give it to Derek because some of the days out were, were incredible with that Watford team. I think Anthony Cunningham's in the conversation. Obviously, Eamon O'Shea is in the conversation, Finton. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go is with Derek. He's in your he's in your own conversation. <laughs> go on, Finton. Who do you pick? I, I think I'll just go for Cunningham. Uh, I I think that that daily point is a good one about the kind of yo-yo aspect of it. Um, and it wasn't just like you know, there's maybe there's a natural slide for a lot of teams that kind of do well one year, but I mean, it was a real kind of a fall in twelve and fourteen, and it ended. You know, he's, he's talked about this about kind of not being able to kind of, I suppose, get up to the intensity of like going so close in eleven and thirteen and 
you know, maybe slipping into a zone thinking you're 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 closer than you are then uh, in in the following season. Um Cullinan would just edge Derek for me and then but it'll be an extremely recently biased. Tom Ryan would be the big one then from the nineties. Because especially, you know, when you think of where Limerick had come from at that time, um and you know, look, he's probably kind of haunted about the kind of the way it turned out and all that, like you know. But even the kind of winning a couple of those monster championships was a was a serious old achievement. Shane, um, with a comment in from from Joe Carroll, who uh, he plays senior club hurling there with Ross Gray, uh, he said Davy Fitz. He said no one counts that soft all Ireland one in Clare in twenty thirteen. Uh, for which, for which you you tagged Derek Lynch and uh, with a kind of a a little ouchy kind of a gif, and he's after after replying factually incorrect. So he's not uh, he's not he's not happy with that one. Um, Kieran McBride said Dale uh, O'Shea Murphy, Anthony Cunningham, Eamon O'Shea, and Derek McGrath. You have someone actually agreeing with you about Eamon O'Shea. First two laid down the groundwork for the subsequent All Irelands that their counties won. Uh, your brother Paddy said uh, John Stapleton, so you might have to expand on that a small bit. That's the old lad. He'd be known as a legendary manager down home. The sort of lad who uh, he has a notepad and then he'd actually wear something like this a big old puffy jacket. He'd have a pair of shoes and a tracksuit on and he'd have the clipboard out and he'd be writing out the teams, all capital letters now, by the way, for every player in the team. Legendary manager in Burris Lee. There's um, another one, Shane. Uh, we a couple, couple of comments in. Um, Alan T just said Eamon O'Shea hugely influential on the tactics of the of the game currently. It doesn't really he doesn't really agree that uh, that he should be in the manager category. Uh, Anne O'Neill is the opposite. She says, I agree with you, Shane. Um, you might want to give uh, give Anne a text or a ring and just say thanks. Uh, James S says, uh, he's talking about Liam Cahill here. Liam Cahill discarded some serious experience. Maura Shannon and Connors from Waterford could have been used to bring on younger players in group. He will regret it, in my opinion. So that's an interesting one that, that will play out. 